Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. The Wizard of Oz, the adventure game, is a really cool game. This is a very light game. It's very simple. I've played a lot of games. I'm, I'm sure there's some people who are newer to games who have some trouble with it. But it takes you through six adventures in the movie. It goes straight with the story. So if you know the movie of Wizard of Oz and you like it, it's all in this game. And you'll start out as Dorothy in the black and white, and you'll go through. Some dice rolling, some moving things around. It's a cooperative game, so everybody will be working together to try to fulfill the adventure or the win-loss condition for each adventure you're going to go on. And as you go through the book, every scenario, there's six of them, will have a win-loss condition. And each of the adventures is going to play differently within the scope of the same rules. And if it changes the rules up, it will tell you on that scenario. Very easy to play through. You can have some great managers. That all the components are really good. And this is something you can play over and over again with new groups and using different strategies that you want to implement. If you're a fan of Wizard of Oz, I think you're really going to like this. This is probably one of the best Wizard of Oz games it's probably the best Wizard of, Oz, Wizard of Oz game I've played. I don't know of any other ones out there that would beat this. But it really feels like you're going through the book, or the movie. And I, it's a slave to it almost. It, it's really going to go through it step by step. And it's not going to deviate from it very much. But some of the mechanisms, like when the witch is up in the sky making that. It's a very neat thing that they're introducing here. So even if you haven't played a lot of games, I think you can pull this out have good family nights. It's what I would easily recommend to anybody who likes Wizard of Oz. It's a definite keeper for us. Here is the Wizard of Oz adventure book game. As you open up, it's a very striking cover. I like this cover quite a bit. Get a rule book and an adventure book. So the rule book will take a look in a few minutes. I'm only going to show you the first page of the adventure book. You'll see this has a spot over here that tells you the conditions set up, what you're doing, the board you'll be playing on, and then the challenges you have to overcome. These are the cards that you have to play down here. Everything is very, very simple to do. Now, you're going to get some miniatures here. You're going to get Glinda. You're going to have uh, the Scarecrow. You're going to get the Tin Man. You're going to get the Wicked Witch. You're going to get the Lion. And you're going to get Dorothy. Now, these are okay miniatures. I actually like them quite a bit. But one of the problems with these are is that there's many times on the board we're going to have to have them on the same spot and they don't fit. So what I had to do was just take one off and say, put these aside and say they're all there. It would have been nicer to have maybe an extra miniature of each of them, but smaller, or standees, I think might have worked a little bit big, better. You're going to get some player aids that will be here. These are really nice, kind of go through the turn for you. Any number of these little chits and stuff you'll use for the six adventures that you go on. Very nice. And you're going to get a bunch of cards. Now, the normal story cards will look like this, and they'll have like wonder, courage, very generic stuff. You're going to get story cards that will have unique powers, and then you're going to have these little chapter cards that are a little bit smaller. For spoiler reasons, I'm not going to showcase these to you. So this is the rule book. It's going to give you an overview of all the components for the entire game. Usually how you set up. And then, once again, this is the first one you'll see. You'll come over here on the side. It'll have set up for each of the six adventures you're going to go on. So you need to utilize both of that. A game overview is kind of the actions you're going to have on a turn. And then just generically how you do story cards and completing challenges. The song challenge is a little bit different. The special cards, and there's a fact here at the back. Very, very good. The game isn't very hard to pick up and play. I think you probably need maybe 10, 15 minutes to read through this if you've never played a board game before. Those that are heavy gamers, probably five minutes is very simple. Because most of the rules you're going to be following for each scenario will be right here. You'll be able to utilize this, the playing area, and then what you're doing over here. And there's six of these that you'll go through. If you've seen the movie, I guess there really aren't any spoilers, but I don't want to mix things up for you. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the story cards and shuffle these up. You're going to take the advanced ones, which have all the actions on them, shuffle those up. Just set those aside. You may or may not need those. Then you'll take the chapter cards. You'll shuffle these up because you'll need these in the game. Each player will take four of these story cards and be their starting hand. The game's cooperative, so you can kind of just tell everybody what you have or just play open hands. The scenario over here will tell you what you need to do. So it tells you you need to put Dorothy in the pigsty, which is right there. You need to put the horse and cow. So you go through the components, and you'll pick out whatever you need for the scenario. In this case, you'll put the farm hands will go in the haystack. These are the generic ones you'll use for each. These are the completed challenges. As you complete a challenge, you'll put these on them. So you can take those and set those aside. 
So the horse and the cow go on their spots, happy side up. The chicken and the hog go unhappy. So it's important to note that each of these, and this I'll explain right here, has a happy and a grumpy side. If you ever have all of them on the grumpy side and need to flip one over and cannot, then you would lose this scenario. You win the scenario, or you also lose if the twister gets all the way down. So you put the twister token out on the start, and if it gets to the end before you can take care of everything, you're going to lose. In order to win, you need to complete all of the challenges. So each challenge is going to work a little bit different, but here I'll tell you to sing a song. Singing the song is usually pretty easy. you got to be in the haystacks, which is over here. And you need to give up a number of wonder cards, which are these green ones like this. And based on how many you give up is the reward that you're going to get. If you want to do this one, the shiftless farmhands, each animal has to be on its happy side. Right now we have two animals on their grumpy side. And the wagon must be fixed. It's broken right now. I need to give up a yellow, a red, and a blue card. And then I can draw a card from the supply deck. What's really cool about these, these will give you powers that you can use and discard as normal. But you keep them as you go through all of the adventures. Same thing here, I need to get Dorothy up here to Professor Marvel, and then I can draw a card after giving up a blue and two greens. And then this last one, after I complete all of these, I gotta get back to the farmhouse because the twister is coming and give up a blue and a yellow. So let's talk about player turn. The first thing you can do on a player turn is you can move any character zero to one or zero, one or two spaces. So I can move Dorothy uh, one space to the haystacks, but these are people I can also move in this scenario, which is the farmhands, and I can move them one space. So a total of two. I moved her one space, and I moved them another space. So that's two. Movement is done. Now, in this scenario, if you're next to the wagon, you can fix it for free. It's automatic. Or if I'm next to an unhappy animal, I can just flip them over with the farmhands. Next thing I do is I can then take a storytelling action. I can discard any number of cards. So I can discard all three and start moving people around again. I could complete any of these challenges if I have the cards and I've met the requirements. I can trade or take a single card from another player. Or if I have any of the Glenda Goodwitch, if I've earned any of these stars, I can utilize these. What she's gonna allow you to do is restart the chapter without having to restart over. It means anything you've earned, you get to keep. Or I can just draw three cards from the deck. That can be very helpful. After I take my actions, let's go ahead and see what I want to do here uh, for a particular action. I don't have any of the cards that I'm going to need, but I'm in the haystack, so let's say I want to give up my one wonder card. I will discard that out, and if I give up one, it's no reward, but I have completed it, so I'm one-fourth of the way to winning the game. Now, usually what you want to do these songs is not just give up one. You want to give up for whatever benefit that you want to gain there. After my turn is done, I will draw two cards from the story deck. Remember, you can never have more than six, so you need to discard at the end of your turn. And then I will draw a card from the chapter deck and see what happens. Move the farm hand to the haystack, so he's going to move back here. If the hog is happy, flipping to his grumpy side. Well, lucky for us, he's already on his grumpy side. And that's a quick overview of a turn and how you play. Remember, there's going to be six of these adventures you go on, and whatever these up to upgraded story cards you get will follow you, and you'll be able to keep them as you move on and get stronger and stronger. I don't want to show you any more of the game because it'll be spoilers for you. I don't want to do that. This gives you a quick overview of how to play. Who should buy this game? Families, people who like Wizard of Oz. This is a homage, and this was definitely, there's some love in this about the series. I mean, you're going to hook up with the Scarecrow and the, the uh, Tin Man and the, and the Cowardly Lion. They're all in here. This is the Wicked Witch of the West, Glinda's in here. Everybody's in here. The farmhands are in here. You're going to go through the story in a light way. It's an easier game. Something intended to be played with your family or uh, lighter gamer friends or even your children are really going to get this one. This would be a great game to watch the movie and then go play the game and just have a whole setup of it. This is one I really like. It has a lot of charm to it. I really like this series. Princess Bride came before it. This is one I can easily recommend to any Wizard of Oz fan. Keeper for us.